Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Christopher de Sachs. I'm an engineer and researcher at the CSIR in smart mobility. Uh, and you're joining us today for a panel discussion on reducing road freight costs and emissions through green tires. Um, I'm very thankful to have with me today um, some colleagues from academia and industry. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick roundtable to, to introduce some of them. Um, so first up, we have from Wits University, we have Professor Frank Kienhofer. Uh, Frank is a visiting associate professor and research consultant at Wits. Uh, and has spent many, many, many years um, in the automotive sector, focusing on, on truck safety and dynamics um, and sustainable road freight transport. So if you can just give us a, a wave hello there, Frank. Thank you. Um, and then also from WITS, we have uh, Rian Abdullah, who is a master's student of Frank's, um, where his work focuses mainly on the development of Android apps for monitoring um, freight vehicle operations in service. Um, on the schedule, we were going to be joined by uh, Mr. Christian Gazele from Michelin, um, but unfortunately, Christian will not be with us today. Uh, but, but we've got Hein representing Michelin, and we, we're thankful for that. Um, so just as a, to get the ball rolling, um, I just wanted to set the context a little bit for our discussion today. So we're talking about road freight transport, um, but with a specific focus on heavy trucks. Uh, so long haul transport and, and heavy trucks uh, by road. And I'd like to just steal the tagline from the Road Freight Association here to say that without trucks, South Africa stops. And this, they really, I can't overstate that, that statement. Um, so the vast majority of inland freight in South Africa is moved by trucks for better or worse. Um, and it's our job to try and make those operations as efficient and as sustainable as possible. So hence the title of this talk in, in reducing costs and emissions, which, which can be done simultaneously. Um, and from an emissions point of view, road transport also accounts for, for the vast majority of emissions from the transport sector. And heavy trucks are overly represented in that, even though they're a small percentage of the actual vehicles on the roads, uh, they account for about a fifth of the carbon emissions from transport in South Africa. Um, and South Africa's um, efforts to reduce emissions in, in transport um, is made clear by our Department of Transport, and we, we do have carbon reduction emissions targets in our green freight strategy. So this is not just something that's kind of in, in the long distant future or something that only Europe is interested in. It's definitely important to South Africa as well. Um, so having said that, I think the best introduction now will be to play a short video uh, and this video is going to give an outline of some uh, experimental work that was done um, in collaboration between uh, Michelin, Wits University, CSR, and Cambridge University. Um, this was done last year to try and quantify the actual savings potential of what are called green tires or low energy tires, um, specific range from Michelin. We wanted to know the, the, the savings that they could have on South African trucks in South African conditions. So let me just get that going. So we've been busy this week at Jurotech. We're looking to do evidence-based research trials to evaluate how we can reduce CO2 emissions and reduce fuel consumption. The Michelin Group is committed to social responsibility. Therefore, it was important for us to be involved in this project. We had two trucks, so a 6x4 Iveco, Stralis 480. We've been running the one on a full rig of X-Line tires, one full rig of X-Multi-HD range tires. What's super important with doing testing like this is to eliminate all of the variables. There are a lot of variables at play which, which have to be normalized. 
We know that the fuel consumption is dependent on alignment, the vehicle, the driver, as well as the weather. And in order to eliminate all of those variables, we had to make sure that the alignment was 100% accurate. And then following the fuel consumption on the can of the vehicle, the truck was set on 80 kilometers per hour on cruise control. Running for two hours, then the truck would stop for 10 minutes. In order to eliminate the driver variability, we've been swapping the drivers between vehicles. At the CSR, it's very important for us to do research that is industrially relevant uh, and that also has a national impact. Uh, and I think this work represents both of those things very well. So what's important is to change road transport operators' behavior to actually believe that they can get fuel saving. And in order to do so, Michelin have needed to have an independent authority, which is the SRF South Africa, made up of CSR, Stellenbosch University, Sony University of Technology, as well as the University of the Western Cape, to actually do the testing for them. Close collaboration with industry, but the results from this uh, could have a national impact in terms of reducing carbon emissions and reducing the cost of logistics in South Africa. So this is day two, and after having swapped the green tires, onto vehicle B and the black tires onto vehicle A. We're still getting consistent results that the green tires have a fuel consumption reduction of eight to 10% and we're super happy about that. We can see clearly that there was no differentiation between the drivers, there were no differentiation between the trucks. The consumption were following the X line and the savings are consistent on the X line tires. We as Michelin are concerned about the environment. Any solution to possibly reduce fuel consumption and the reduction of CO2 emissions is greatly welcomed by any transporter. So for all the transporters out there, we have a test, we've done the test, we can showcase the test. And I can confidently say that I believe these numbers and, uh, and that the numbers are correct. It's an 8% saving on the X-Line tire versus a normal conventional tire. For a road transport operator, it's gonna mean you're gonna make more profit. It's more money in your pocket, it's a product for you. I really wanna thank Michelin for the confidence that they had in the SRF SA that they could do this independent testing. Evico, ELT workshop. With University, with Michelin and with some support from Cambridge University. As well as Afrit for giving us the trailers, and Lafarge for the load. From One Logics providing the drivers. As well as Total for giving us the fuel. It's really been a, a multifaceted collaborative effort. through all right so no audio issues um, so let me just get back sorted here okay so I think that that gave a nice um, high level overview of, of the testing that was done uh, last year um, and then so maybe to get us uh, to kick off the discussion here um, I'd like to ask Hein if you can maybe just give us a bit more background as to what are these green tires? What what makes them different from normal tires? And what, you know, is it to the construction or different materials that gives them these low energy properties? Sure, thanks, Chris. Um, so in general and, and really practical terms, um, the energy tire versus the normal conventional tire is more towards um, reducing the rolling resistance of a certain tire. Um, in technical terms, it's more about the viscoelasticity of the rubber aspect. Um, it's basically reducing the amount of energy required to making the tire roll. And um, by doing that with the normal energy or the green tire versus the normal conventional tire, it means that you need less of amount of effort to, to make the tire roll, basically burning less amount of fuel and thus reducing the amount of CO2 emissions. That's, that's um, how can I say? Um, so tires, play quite a, so tires play quite a quite a critical role then in in the the fuel efficiency of of trucks. In general aspect, we work on a one third principle. So one out of three tanks is generally um, as a result of your tires. Yeah, due to rolling, rolling resistance of your tires. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really substantial. Um, so then maybe just a follow on question uh, also for Hein. Um, so obviously it's fuel saving, it's it's emission saving, which is great, but are there any particular drawbacks that would prevent industry from, from taking up this kind of technology? Are, are they more expensive or do they not last 
uh, the same as normal tires or anything like that? Potentially what the guys generally see is that, you know, when you're using these sort of tires, you need to have um, a well-maintained fleet. Um, second to that, it's, it's not a general product for all sort of applications throughout the South African transporter. It's a transporter that's, that's going and looking beyond the normal CPK formula that everybody's using. It's a transporter that's mainly running on, on long, long haul. Um, it's, it's transport that's running um, potentially between Johannesburg and Cape Town, Cape Town, Durban. Um, we call it long haul and, and regional application um, where the tire actually, you know, becomes, um, how can I say, into, into part of, of the role out of, um, over an extensive amount of, of kilometers. So it's not a short distance um, type of application for transporters. This tire will probably not show the full effect. Um, the, the negative effect, if you have to put one to it, is potentially um, by decreasing the amount of original tread depth and different tire rubber properties inside of the tire, um, the decrease in mileage is, is a probable. Um, Percentage wise, we can't necessarily put it because every transport is different, every driver is different, every route, um, every truck. So there's a lot of variables um, that has a play, but they, they can be an expectancy of a certain decrease in, in mileage that will increase your CPK. But the total um, saving in, in fuel spend, if you look at the total expenditure for, for a transporter, fuel is by far the more um, a big expense for transporter versus tires. Tires in general yeah. is between two to five percent, and, and fuel between forty-five and fifty percent. So, if we save eight percent on fuel, the the valuable or the value in monetary value is is much higher than the amount of CPK you lose. Absolutely yes. Um, so those those kind of operations in South Africa, do you know kind of offhand what percentage of kind of truck kilometers in South Africa this could be appropriate for? these kind of long haul motorway operations? So in general aspects, if, if I really look at South African um, motorways, um, N1, N3, we're looking at anything between 300, 500 to 1,000 kilometers one way. Um, it's, it's best when you'll see the best result you'll see is when the truck is actually loaded because that's where you see the difference between the rolling resistance of a conventional tire versus a, a green tire. Um, when the truck is generally empty, you know, there's not a load, so there's not a lot of, um, you need some sort of load to prove the, the aspect yeah. of the rolling resistance. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much, Hein. Um, I'd like to shift the conversation a little bit now towards the, the actual collaboration uh, between the various partners and, and Michelin here um, that resulted in, in doing this testing. Um, so, Frank, if I could please ask you to uh, introduce us to this uh, South African Centre for Sustainable Road Freight. Um, and I'm going to share a couple of slides here for you. Um, if you just give me one second again. Thanks, Chris. Um, just while we're waiting for the, the slides to come up. But, um, yeah, as you can see, the collaboration is on the South African side uh, between five universities, Stellenbosch, Fitz, the University of the Western Cape, and China University of Technology, and the CSR, which we, we co-opt as, as a university. And we collaborate with universities in the United Kingdom, which are Cambridge University and, and Harriet Watt University. And what's super important is not just about universities, it's also about having industry partnerships like what we've seen with Michelin. I think if we want to solve the climate change problem, then we need to have industry partners like Michelin. We're also very excited um, to collaborate with uh, Chinese counterparts and Indian counterparts. Um, so the SRF India and the Smart Freight Vehicle and Green Logistics um, Center in, in China. And we're all collaborating with the SRF in the UK and sharing ideas, um, students, and data to try to tackle this, uh, the, the problem of climate change and, and decarbonizing road freight because it is really a global problem and will affect all of, of the countries in the world. 
we can go on to the next slide. Um, so another one of the pillars is it's not just about technology that we're using to, to try to tackle this problem. We're also including operations. So this specific problem or this specific project that we looked at was one which involved technology, but if we look at impact and, and solution to the problem of decarbonization, so for instance, um, decarbonizing uh, logistics through including backhauling can really make a difference. So we have technology operations and then also looking to, to influence policy. Um, so the three um, pillars are all working together and working with industry. And you can see there Michelin, one of our important partners, as, as well as, as Transnet. Um, really, this is just the structure and, and we have an executive committee, a steering committee, and it's all of the universities as, as well as the, the technical representatives from the companies that also have a seat at the table. So it's, it's not the universities dictating the research, it's also the companies involved in the research. So we're very much applied research and, and looking to make a, a difference. It's, it's not a case of, of doing research for research, uh, research's sake, which is great. And, um, and really the benefits of, of all collaborating is, is um, and working with the SRFSA is uh, you have an opportunity to direct your research. We have a proven academic re record. We collaborate with arguably the top universities in the UK. Um, we have mature relationships already established with industry. And if you are an industry partner, you get to leverage your industry funding. So you're not just funding research for research at stake. Um, but looking to, to have applied research with solutions. While we are focused on uh, road freight, we're also very cognizant of the fact that rail plays an important uh, part in decarbonization and we fully support that. We're also looking to train young engineers and, and really what's important is, is to look at evidence-based uh, research and a scientific approach as we saw with this, with this project to try and come up with solutions. All right, thank you very much, Frank. Um, I think that's a, a nice overview of, of what, the, what the SRF is, is trying to do um, in South Africa. Um, so can you maybe then just give a, a little bit more detail on how this specific project came about, you know, working with Michelin? Um, how was it, how do you fund these kind of projects? Um, you know, working between academia and industry. It was it was really Hein that came up with the with the idea for the tests. Initially, we wanted to do the tests in the field and actually put them on operating uh, trucks in the field. We, however, though, thought having tests for for one year would be too long, and we wanted the the results immediately. And hence, Hein came up with the idea to to rather just test for a week at Geratech, but it was in collaboration with Michelin involving Cambridge and their expertise, and of course your expertise at the CSR, all working together, um, phoning up, organizing, getting Ibico trucks, getting the Afrit trailers, getting the load from, from Lafarge, um, ensuring that the, the tractors were, were serviced correctly, um, and, and it all came together in the end, which, which is great. Wonderful. Um, so then um, maybe if we can just bring Zhao Zheng in here. Um, so Zhao Zheng was, was involved in this testing from uh, Cambridge University side. Uh, so Zhao Zheng, can you tell us a bit uh, about how you were involved um, and what you contributed to the experimental work? Um, thanks, Chris, for the question. Yes, so I'm a, um, a senior research associate with the Center for Sustainable Road Freight at Cambridge University and as Frank I described so the Center for Sustainable Road, Road Freight, SRF UK and the SRF South Africa, we are a brother and sister centers. So I'm more than happy um, to help uh, with the test. So here um, at Cambridge, I was involved in the development of 
uh, Android mobile phone based data logging facilities to measure the um, key information like the vehicle speed, energy consumption to consumption of vehicles. And also we gained some experience in analyzing the data using um, the facility. So I bring the facility as well as our experience um, in data analysis from Cambridge to South Africa. And uh, I instrument our data logging facility data loggers on the two trailers, two tractor trailer combinations to log the data throughout the test. And I was involved in the data analysis to deliver the results. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Xiaoxing. Um, and do you think that, that uh, the logger, the SRF logger, um, does it have applicability to future similar type research projects in South Africa? I think so. I think so. So in the UK, we have been using the logger to um, measure the vehicle performance uh, from a variety of projects involving both the in-field testing and the in-service testing, which means we have a vehicle in realistic logistic operation on the road. So we have doing that both in the UK. So, and actually, so I think our next plan is to use the logger to log data from in-service operations of heavy vehicles in South Africa. Right, thank you. Um, so then, Maybe we can talk a bit spe more specifically about the, the testing itself and, and the results now. Um, so maybe back to Michelin. Um, in the video, we saw that uh, an eight to 10 percent reduction in fuel fuel use and, and emissions was recorded for these. Uh, as Jiaxing has pointed out, these were kind of controlled tests as opposed to in-service tests. Um, so were these the kind of figures that you expected? Um, and what do you think the actual figures would be in an in-service type uh, environment, actual trucks operating, as you say, on the N3 or, or something like that? Okay, um, maybe I can I can answer in two folds. So firstly, we were very positive that we would measure a notable CO2 reduction. Um, however, the only way that we can confirm these numbers is actually by doing a trial. So these, um, the partnership with the CSIR um, or the SRF, SA, in the sense, was really the way for us to prove in South Africa, in South African conditions, that there is a tire out there that can actually contribute towards a transporter that's looking beyond just the normal CPK. Um, regarding the results, the 8 to 10 percent is really fantastic for us. Um, and, and maybe just the last word on, on the partnership um, with the CSR and Vets University just made sense for us. Um, research leaders in their own right with great interest in helping shape technology that will impact the present and the future. Um, and and that, that's basically for, for, the, for the collaboration. In terms of the result, um, yes, the eight to 10 percent is fantastic. I think they, the people that was part of the test on the day uh, or the week can really um, can vouch for, for the numbers. There was a lot of hard work going in, especially from Frank, um, moderating between everyone, um, collaboration, ensuring everything is in place, um, actually changing the tires on the trucks and the trailers, that was very hard. Um, but yeah, that's enough about the test. For the results, yes, um, 8 to 10 percent actually exceeded our expectation to a slight, um, slight angle. Um, the expectation was anything um, towards 6 percent, so 8 to 10 percent is actually very fantastic. And um, it just showcases that sometimes you rather look at um, all the sort of variables that could play an effect and, and not focus on when everything is actually going well, that you just, you can actually exceed the number. That's actually part of, of um, the factual evidence that you can exceed if everything is in place. In terms of maintenance in this instance, um, taking all the, the truck variables into consideration, the drivers were checked, everything was done well and, and regulated from everybody that was part of the test. So. The 8 to 10% is, is actually a, a very good factual evidence for, for this result. Okay. And then maybe either Frank or Zhaozheng, um, just from a, a, an automotive engineering point of view, do you think that like the conditions in South Africa, maybe the, uh, the altitude there at Geritech, the, the 
relatively higher temperatures uh, could be reason that we should expect slightly higher savings for these kind of tires in South Africa, as opposed to, for example, mainland Europe. Xia Zhang, if, if I can take that, I, I really do think the fact that in South Africa, we have the high felt, and so the air is 15% less dense, and that did make a difference. And as a result, your aerodynamic drag was lower, and hence magnified the rolling resistance. Also, in South Africa, we use a, a 56 ton workhorse as compared to mainland Europe, which uses 44 tons on the whole. So again, you've got more tires, which magnifies the, the rolling resistance. And thirdly, I, I think the, the heat plays a role. So South Africa is, is very, very hot. Um, on the day, we had temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius. And that rolling resistance dissipates the energy which goes into heat, which raises the temperature of the tires. And I'm not an expert in the area, but I think the hotter the tire runs, the more rolling resistance plays a role. And as a result, I, I think this is why in South Africa, certainly as compared to mainland Europe, the, the results were, were even better in South Africa compared to, to what Michelin might have expected. Right. And, and if I'm correct, was there some uh, initial kind of lab testing done uh, before these uh, tests at Juratech? Um, there were, and maybe this is a good opportunity to let Rayan into the conversation because he was yeah. the one in the lab doing the tests. So Rayan, over to you. Thanks, Frank. Um, yes, Chris, so uh, prior to doing these trials, um, we did do some uh, lab work um, but basically checking normal tires against these tires. <clears throat> and the results were quite good there as well. Okay, were they, um, so obviously it's very different in environments, but did you see a, a similar level of, of savings that were possible? Uh, yeah, we did see a similar uh, levels of um, savings. Um, obviously it's uh, a lab tested, so um, there's, it's different, it's much more controlled than is uh, on the track. Um, but yeah, it did uh, support um, the findings that we did in the trial test um, where there was uh, savings on the tires. And then uh, while we're with you, uh, Rayan, um, so this, this formed part of your master's studies, correct? That's correct, Chris. Okay. And how was, the, how was it for you to be involved in this kind of project? Um, Hein and Frank have mentioned that it was quite an involved project. There's quite a lot going on that needs to be organized for what can seem like a fairly simple task. So was that interesting experience for you to be involved in? Sure, yeah, it was. Um, I didn't realize how long it uh, takes to set up these things. So it was um, a good few months in the making where um, things were going back and forth between guys and getting everything set up. Um, a huge uh, a shout out goes to Frank. I mean, he did an absolutely good job um, getting everyone, even that Saturday, which we had uh, minor setbacks. And I mean, I think he finished late in the night with everything, uh, made sure everything was uh, on, uh, ready for Monday and ready to go. Um, so yeah, it was a great experience. Um, I really loved it and uh, yeah, it was good. Excellent, thank you, good to hear. Um, so maybe one last point on, on the testing itself. Uh, Zha Zheng, you mentioned that um, you know, there's these kind of controlled tests, but there's also uh, in-service testing um, and that you've been involved in some in-service testing in the UK. Um, so maybe be between you and Hein, uh, what are the, the possibilities for a next step now doing in-service tests of these kind of tyres on trucks in South Africa? Uh, maybe I can go first, Chris. Um, so at Michelin, protecting the environment is, in is integral to our commitments of more accessible, safer, greener, and more efficient mobility in our actions, including product and service design. Um, we believe that while the charge to lead the sustainable mobility does not only sit with us, manufacturers, the value chain uh, are much broader. It requires wider collaboration with universities such, um, such as VITS, TUT and, and UWC that was involved with the test, research institutions like yourselves, the CSIR, 
governments to a certain extent and, and others. And this was a great, uh, great test for the Michelin brand here in South Africa. And, and we look forward to doing more of them as they, as they come available in South Africa and, and really educating and helping and, and showcasing transporters where we can. So in-service testing is, is definitely on the cards then? Yes, each, each individual um, request, obviously we have an internal team that would need to analyze certain aspects, but um, it's not a no off, off, the, off the bat, but of course there, there needs to be some sufficient and, and internal investigations done as well. Absolutely, okay, thank you. Um, so, We've covered a lot of the, the technical side of things. Um, obviously, we want these kind of savings and results to get into the market. Um, you know, the 8 to 10% saving is not going to make a difference in South Africa if only two trucks are, are using these kind of tires. So what are, what are the current barriers to uptake in South Africa? Is it a matter of awareness in industry? Um, are we seeing the kind of sales figures start to, to pick up in, in South Africa for this kind of technology? Um, Chris, so in general, for many African countries, the concern around sustainability does not always sit, you know, in the front and center because of social economic conditions. In general, um, the uptake of sustainable products as the X-Line uh, Energy tire range is not always a comparatively quick one. Um, it really takes time to, to run in fleets to, and to showcase to transporters that really makes a difference. Um, however, the, the more trials like the one we just conducted are done and results publicized, especially the positive impact that this technology and innovation has on the business bottom line, then we'll find that there will be more interest. Um, up until then, when we can really see and run tests and educate transporters and where they can see the impact on the bottom line of their own pockets, um, surely then we'll see a, a, an increase in interest. Um, but the adoption will rely on the underlying message of one of what quantifiable difference the technology brings to the business. The fact that the difference is material and can be crunched down to numbers makes all the difference. So that, right. That's in short. Okay. So, so in my mind, um, so green tires are, are one uh, technology, which, which I'd refer to as low hanging fruit in reducing emissions in, in transport. And um, there are some other, uh, interventions that are possible, kind of low-hanging fruit interventions such as truck aerodynamics uh, improvements and uh, new engine technologies and that sort of thing. So obviously anything that's easy to implement, industry should um, take that up uh, as a matter of urgency and, and it will save their bottom line as well. But if we, if we look more to the, the longer term um, for road freight transport, um, once all these kind of low hanging fruit solutions have been taken up by the sector, what kind of things are we then looking at? Are we, does like battery electrification make sense for, for these long haul trucks? Does, does hydrogen make sense for these trucks? Cause it's, it's a fairly niche sector with its own, uh, constraints compared to, you know, normal passenger vehicles. So maybe this is just an open question then to, to everyone in the panel, um, about where we see the real hard-hitting long-term interventions in reducing carbon in, in long-haul road freight. Frank, I'm almost <laughs> certain you've got something to say. Hi, Chris. Um, let me feel that. Um, in support of, of Hind and these low rolling resistant tires and, and the um, balancing of um, the socio-economic problems in South Africa, I think it really makes sense in South Africa that we we focus on the low hanging fruit like um, low rolling resistance tires at, at first, because we do have to realize that um, decarbonization of road freight and, and tackling climate change doesn't happen in isolation, that it's, it's useless to speak about that when we have, you know, such an immense problem with, with people without jobs um, that, are, that are poor. But I, I, I do think then long term, we are going to have to tackle this problem because we are going to see the, the effects of climate change and, and the fact that um, we're going to have droughts, that food shortages will start playing a role. And I think their legislation and policy um, will have to try and govern those changes because I don't see the free market choosing a more expensive um, 
choice in, in order to, to do the right thing. And I think, again, this is where the SRFSA should be working with government and making sure that when government does get involved, they do make the right um, decisions. Um, to discuss the long-term solutions, tackling road freight is, is very difficult because batteries um, currently, while being great for passenger vehicles, is not currently a solution for long haul freight. Your, your battery will possibly be in the region of 10 tons, 20 tons, and, and that's not viable. So the SRF UK is looking at a solution to use electricity through catenary lines. Um, but again, this is a massive, huge uh, investment. And also maybe just to discuss on hydrogen, because hydrogen does tackle one of the problems um, for batteries for long haul freight in that hydrogen does have a high energy density. Um, so it is possible to have a fuel um, tank which has hydrogen or otherwise liquid hydrogen and carry that um, on a, a truck as compared to a 10 or 20 ton battery. The problem with hydrogen and we need to be aware of is that in order to generate hydrogen, it's not a fuel. You need to take water. You need to then use electrolysis, convert it into hydrogen. You then need to compress the hydrogen or otherwise um, liquefy it again, which takes energy. And then to generate the power, you then need to convert it back into electricity through a fuel cell. And all of those conversions waste energy. And as a result, you're wasting um, possibly three times the amount of energy, which means that it's a very expensive solution. And coming back to, we really need to focus on solutions um, which aren't expensive and uh, which are viable. No, absolutely, Frank. And <clears throat> so that it is a very sound argument. Um, are there perhaps though, like very specific cases uh, or industries or operations in South Africa where hydrogen might make sense in a, you know, in an isolated environment. Um, while noting your point that for a kind of the technology that you want on a large scale, it's, it really doesn't look like it's going to make sense for this this application. Personally, I think there are niche applications, and I'd fully support those niche applications. What I think is important, though, is when people speak about a hydrogen economy and that hydrogen is the future and will take over um, and replace diesel, I think we need to be a very, very wary because that solution will cost three times what we currently pay for diesel energy. And that just really doesn't seem a, a viable solution for, for South Africa. Um, any, <clears throat> anyone want to make any other inputs on that point? Uh, Chris, maybe just in short, um, so hydrogen is also something Michelin Group is looking at. Um, so as, as a French company, um, hydrogen is key to achieving the, per, the Paris uh, Agreement objectives. It's appropriate for all uses and it eliminates the CO2 emissions or decreases and it improves the, the air quality and furthers the energy transition. So Michelin has been working on this technology for more than 15 years. So. More broadly, the mission is committed to serving as a uniting force in this industry. We chair Hydrogen Europe, a public-private partnership within the FCHJU, um, the industry for all European industrial companies, researchers, and national associations involved in hydrogen business. We're also an active member of the Friends Association for Hydrogen and Fuel Cells, and an um, organization that promotes the rollout of electric uh, mobility. So after signing the first promising commercial contracts with our partner Symbio, we now aim to go even further by offering the solutions of the future so Michelin can play a leading role in the sustainable mobility market. So I just wanted to, to say that Michelin is perceived as only a tire manufacturer, but there's a lot more to the Michelin group than perceives the eye. Yeah, perhaps. <clears throat> sorry, absolutely. Um, so I think there's there's probably a lot of work that needs to be done there, uh, at least for the South African context, in really identifying Absolutely. what are the most suitable solutions for South Africa so that we can really invest in the right technologies um, 
up front. We, we do have a bit of benefit of, of hindsight in, in learning what some of the uh, early adopters of technologies in, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere are, are doing, um, and we can figure out what works for us and invest in the right thing. Um, and, and for that, we obviously need uh, scientific uh, evidence and we need academia and research to be working closely with, with industry, which is exactly what the SRF is all about. Um, so I haven't, <clears throat> I haven't received any questions uh, from the audience yet, um, but we've, we've just got a few minutes left. So maybe just to start, start um, wrapping up a bit. Um, so Frank, maybe um, having uh, the, so the SRF in South Africa is now, uh, seems to have been established, but is, is trying to grow. Uh, there was this really nice project on green tires uh, amongst others. Um, what are the next steps for the for the center in the immediate future? So Chris, we have a opportunity to uh, apply for funding to the Royal Academy of Engineering, um, which we will do. And this is also a good opportunity to, to discuss that we did receive a huge amount of, of funding from the Royal Academy of Engineering two years ago, and, and just to thank them for that. And the funding, again, will focus on applied research and, and looking at specific projects which still need to be finalized. But one we're very excited about is um, high capacity vehicles um, and or smart trucks and furthering that, um, uh, that project or, or policy change and, and getting high capacity vehicles established. Also looking at, at data and, and ensuring that we measure logistics accurately and have accurate models, which sounds weird in, in terms of how does this support climate change, but it's super important that we have accurate numbers in order to make the correct um, decisions. And, and also perhaps another project on, on driver training, which again is a low hanging fruit, which I think we can say four to 5% of fuel and CO2 reduction. Okay. No, it sounds really good. And it's, it's really great for us at the CSR to be um, involved in, in these kind of initiatives, so, um, really having an impact in, in industry and, and in South Africa. Um, so, Okay, so then I think maybe we can we can start wrapping up. Uh, maybe we can just do a, a quick round table if, if anyone wants to have some final words for, for the audience. Um, I'm hoping there's maybe some transport operators in the audience or otherwise, just people who are generally interested in environmental impact and, and that sort of thing. So if we can just go around the table, um, starting with you, Zha Zheng, you have any last comments? Um, I think, yes, um, as uh, Frank and Hen mentioned, so um, the next step will be to do some in-service measurement um, to understand that the realistic uh, fuel benefit of these green tires. I think that is very important. And at that time, I think we um, will be able not only to collect the energy consumption figures to give a, a more um, realistic conclusion in terms of the fuel benefit of the tires. But at the meantime, we can collect the tire wearing um, data. So which could help justify how these green tires, which may subject to um, less wearable performance, how these green tires um, can be um, used in different operations and how we can um, optimize op operation by using um, a mixture of the green tires and the conventional tires. For example, when the vehicle going into the city quite often, so we could have um, the trailer axles fitted with conventional tires, but if it's a long haul, then we can have all the trailers fitted with the low resistance tires. I think we, if we can do that, that would be really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zhaozhen. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Um, Rian, uh, any last comments you'd like to leave us with? Um, yeah, so um, to the um, 
truck operators, I think it's uh, definitely something that they should look at, um, especially like Heinz said, I mean, uh, fuel is about a 45% expense. Um, this does save the bottom line. And at the moment, everyone needs to save their bottom line. So they should really look at it. Um, and yeah, this is something that's a quick fix. It's, like you said, it's a low hanging fruit and they will see uh, different and benefits from it. And I'd like to thank everyone for um, the trials we ran and for all the guys who've contributed to it. It was really nice working with everyone. Thank you, Ronan, and uh, thank you for, for joining us today. Um, so we've got about just under a minute each for, for Hein and Frank. So Hein, any last words? Um, yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, firstly, I'd really like to thank the SRF, SA, um, and everybody that was involved in the test. I think people don't understand necessarily the background work, and especially a, a, a really big thank you to, to Frank for all the hard work. It was really appreciated. Um, to, to the industry and to the transporters out there, um, it, it's one in every three um, tanks of fuel you are putting into the vehicles are because of the rolling resistance of the tires. And um, I think based on the panel discussion, it's very clear that we have a test that's very clear that, you know, there is a, a solution, immediate solution that can, can contribute to the bottom line of your vehicles or the profitability of your business. Um, even though potentially less mileage, but the amount of saving on the fuel um, is, is really extensive. So um, maybe off the bat, it could be a little bit more expensive potentially, um, we would need to see in every transporter. Every transporter is different, but um, yeah, there is there is a solution out there to save fuel and contribute to the environment. Thank you so much, Hein, and thank you for joining us today. Um, thank Frank, you. you've got the the last thirty seconds. Great, thanks, Chris. I just want to finish off just to say how proud I am of of everyone that was involved. I think everyone put in a huge amount of effort, and it, it showcased how important collaboration and working together is with industry and academia. And finally, just if people are out there um, listening, truck operators to, to really um, to understand that these were scientific and, and really evidence-based trials that can make a difference. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'm not sure if we automatically cut off there, but I think our time's up. Um, yes. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining today. I really appreciate it. I think it was a good discussion. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.